My name is Gary Cunningham. In the latter part of 2011, I was diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. We were married for about two and a half years, and Gary started complaining about being short of breath. Then one day he came home and he said, I have the same disease as my mother. I said, what disease that your mother had? I, I didn't understand because the family didn't talk about the disease. I, I was just shocked. I, I didn't even know what he was talking about. I'd never heard of it. I didn't know anything about it. Well, the first thing I decided to do was to retire. My mother had died of the disease after having been diagnosed only 14 months earlier. So given that history, I thought I was gonna have a short time to deal with this. I've had quite a run of it, but uh, my, my very first decision was that I wasn't gonna die at the office. I knew for myself that the, the best way for me to try to deal with it was to talk to other people who had it. So I started searching on the internet for support groups for this disease. And I was absolutely stunned that there was one here. I came home that night and I remember I told Gary about it and he didn't want anything to do with it. He was like, I'm not doing that. When I first got diagnosed, you know, I was terrified that I was gonna be dead within six months. So. Uh, going to a support group meeting was not on my agenda at all. So why, I, you know, I don't need that right now. I need, uh, I need to find the cure. I need to find the right surgeon. I need to find, you know. And I said, well, that's okay. I, I'm gonna go. I, I knew I needed to go for myself. And I says, well, I can't let you go by yourself. And so by the time it came around, Gary decided that, you know, he would go with me. So we went and by the time the meeting was over, really, felt a lot of relief. Just to see other people that are dealing with it, to talk to them. It was uplifting to realize that even though they had this diagnosis, they were all still living their lives as best as they could. We loved it, both of us. Loved the people, loved the conversations, loved the hope that they gave. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience for both of us. I have hardly missed a single meeting since then. And for the past five years, we've been the facilitators for that support group. One of the hardest things about this disease is that people don't know what it is and they don't understand what you're going through or what the patient's going through because when they see them, you know, the patient can look perfectly fine to them, but inside, you know, their lungs are, the capacity is diminishing, they're becoming more scarred. And as that happens, you know, they have a harder time breathing, harder time doing just normal things. And it's hard as a caregiver to watch that. You know, there's a very real possibility that, you know, Gary's life might not be as long as mine. And you know, I have to deal with that. As a caregiver, you need to take care of yourself first because you need to be in the best shape yourself to be a supportive caregiver. This disease affects the whole family. It's hard to watch somebody not be able to do the things that they used to be able to do. As a caregiver, the best thing that you can do is be supportive, learn as much as you can about the disease and the progression, and be flexible to adapt to that. You have to learn to adjust to the disease, I guess, is, is the best way to say it, because you're not in control of it. Gary and I rarely even sleep in the same bed together anymore because, you know, he starts coughing sometimes and you know, he doesn't want to wake me up. He'll go downstairs and sleep on the couch because he can prop himself up and it helps him sleep better. So it's just stuff like that, the little things, but we haven't let it get us down and we just keep moving forward. There is no normal, really, with this disease. Everybody's experience is different. You need to become proactive with this disease process. Don't just sit and let it take you over. We can go to support groups. We can do pulmonary rehabilitation. We can get involved in clinical trials become active in the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. There's many, many ways to be proactive on this. We all need to be open-minded about it and to understand that there's always hope. Gary is probably one of the most positive people I've ever seen dealing with this disease. 
He's kind of an inspiration to me in how positive he is about what he's been going through. I admire that a lot about him, that he can face something like he's got with such grace and humility. He doesn't let it control his life. Modern medicine is coming up with new ideas and new treatments that one day they're going to, they're going to lick this disease. I'm confident of it. <laughs>